Okay, so let me go ahead and um, I think we're discussing pseudopsychology. So a question when it comes to pseudopsychology, what we've done so far. Any question on pseudopsychology? No, please. So let's continue. All right, so I assume that everything is self-explanatory. So that means that will be yes, the end of... But we can't see your screen. Yes, I'm trying to op open it. So that will be the end oh. of session one. And um, I'll move on to session two. So one thing is, okay, before I move on to session two, you should know of some problems with student power. So that will be our Hello, hello sir. Yep. Please, we can't see your screen. Yes, I'm saying I'm trying to open it. So I'm saying one thing is, it is your duty to find out some strength or some problems related to para and pseudopsychology. And I think you have you have it in your in your slides, so which is self-explanatory and all that. So I'm moving on to session two. I'm still opening the thing, so please exercise patience. All right. So the next session we'll be doing is history and schools of psychology. That's what, where we got into. Then session two is about the history of psychology. Hello. All right. So one thing you should know is that psychology in itself, we're able to get, okay, someone's hand is up or something. Is that Sayram? Yes, sir. Sayram, your hand is up. What's wrong? Yes, Did you say the uh, problem is... All right, so let me go ahead and speak. So one thing about psychology, Sarah, uh -huh, your hand is up. Hello, sir. Do your you voice is very, very it, it, it looks like you are far away from your device, so please. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, Sarah. Please, I was asking if you were saying the... Your voice is very, very low. It's, it looks like you are far away from your device. Um, let me continue on. So the thing is, psychology came from two disciplines. That's what you need to know. That's um, philosophy and science. So these are the two main um, disciplines that influence psychology. So you can see that some of the people you come across them, it's either they were philosophers or they were within what? The realms of science. Some of them did biology and so on and so forth. So um, you, you, you come across some of these um, proponents. So one thing is, we have two main concepts. Some people believe that the mind and the body, they are, they are dependent of, on, on each other. Others also believe that the mind and the body are, what? They are different from each, each other. So let's go through people who believe that the mind is what? Is different from each other and so on and so forth. So for instance, um, the dualists, those who believe that the mind and body, they are, what? they are independent or different from each other, we call them what? The dualism or the dualist. They believe that, hey, the mind, the mind and what in the body are, what? are basically separate. All right. So in most situations, um, there's also one person, one proponent known as Plato. And he believes that the moment someone is born, the person is born with what? 
with knowledge. So, our, the moment that a person is born, because of our genes and everything, we, we have what? Knowledge, according to Plato. So the environment doesn't have any influence on whatsoever. Then there's this person known as John Locke. He believes that our mind is a tabula rasa. When we say something is a tabula rasa, it basically means it is a blank slate, blank. So let me try and um, spell it so that um, you get it well. So they say it is a blank slate, tabula rasa, that's the meaning. So it means that according to John Locke, we come into the, the same, when the moment you are born, we don't have any, what, any knowledge or whatsoever. So our, what, our environment to a large extent influences the knowledge and everything that we, what, we get from our context or society. So these are the two main opposing arguments. All right. So let me erase this. So please, any questions so far? Please, your, sir, please, your voice is so far. You, should have, you could have prompted me earlier. All right, is it okay now? It's still bad, like as in, it's like you are whispering. Ben, I can hear him very clearly. Yes, it might be your network. Yeah, it's, it's your network. Oh, oh no, no, madam, it yeah, might be your network. Hear. Okay. Uh, I'm really sorry. Okay. okay. So the next one is. Um, sir, move, sir, move on. So the, next person, the next person is um, Gustav Fechner. Okay. So when it comes to Gustav Fechner, he, his, Emmanuel, your hand is up. Hello. All right. Hello. Hello. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Please, this, part, this particular slide, slide, we don't have it too. This is, I'm using your main slide, so we can go to, um, you can get it from Sakai. We have this slide. This is your main slide that okay. I'm using. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have this information. Psychophysics. So I'm using all of you. So the next, the next one is, oh, the next one is Gustav Fechner. So we normally say that he's the one who propounded the psychophysics. So he tried to tell us how how um, physical stimulation interacts with what? With psychological experience. Okay, so for instance, you know, physics is, is about, let's say, the, the, the light. They try to tell us how the intensity of light could what? Could affect people, people psychologically. Okay, Lawson, your hand is up. Yes. Sir, mm -hmm. um, you said Gustav, but I have Edward Titchener. I don't know if they are the same people. Is Gustav Titchener, he performed a different thing. We will come to um, Edward Titchener. Okay. Oh. We have several um, routes, so we come to that. All right. So right now, let's move on to the main genesis. When you say genesis, it means the beginning of scientific study in itself. So the person we normally attribute the first person to uh, to conduct any experimental research in psychology we attribute it to someone known as Wilhelm Wundt this person Wilhelm Wundt so we normally say that he is the father of what of experimental psychology that's one thing you should know they can ask you so who is the father or sometimes you can make it who is the father of psychology that's well, Wilhelm Wundt. But the main thing is he's the father of experimental psychology. So he's the first person to, uh, to set up a scientific lab. So he set up the scientific lab in Leipzig, which is in Germany, in 1879. They can actually this information. And you could see that he's, he was what, a physiologist. All right. So let me move on. So one thing 
whom this was that. All right, Reginald, do you have a question? Ah! Oh. Sir, please, we didn't catch the, I, okay, I didn't catch the year and then. You have it in your slides, it's 1879, the year. Leipzig. So you have it in your slides, you can go and refer. 1879, that's it. So he is the one, he, we normally say that he is the person who founded something known as the structuralism. So according to him, he was trying to tell us that in most situations, for us to study the mind, we are supposed to know the structure of it, the basic elements that goes on within the mind. So he is the main founder of the structuralist school, that's the structuralism. So all you can see, we normally say that he is one of the people who are who seriously propounded structuralism. It is a school, we'll come to that a school of psychology. And when it comes to them, they normally believe that the structure of the mind is really what essential. That means we are supposed to know the basic element, the thoughts, experiences, and, and what in and emotions within our mind. And they normally say that for you to know these thoughts, experiences, and emotions, you are supposed to use a method known as objective introspection. So all the structuralists, they believe in what? In using a method known as structural, sorry, introspection. And introspection is about the person himself what? Examining his or her thoughts and mental activities. So it means the, the same person would what? Would inwardly look through his or her mind and what? and examine his or her mental activities. So a structuralist could is, for instance, if he wants to use introspection, will just come to you, will tell you to what, to calm down, okay? When you are very calm in a silent room and all that, then a person will ask you, close your, close your eyes, and what, is, what are your thoughts? What is going through your mind at the moment? How do you feel at the moment? That's a, a typical introspection. So the patient will be the one to, to tell the therapist his or her thoughts and feelings. All right. So that's when it comes to introspection. Then the next one. So the main thing we'll be doing currently at the moment is the schools of psychology, as I indicated. The schools of psychology, schools. So when it says schools of psychology, it means some group of individuals, okay, whenever they share similar ideas, they, they form their own what, their own school on a subject matter. So for instance, the structuralism that I'm talking about, it's a typical school of psychology. It means that we have several people who, are, who share similar ideas as to how psychology should be. So they are the first people who came on board. And they told us that, oh, for us to know how, whatever mind, for us to understand the mind, we should try and understand the basic element within the mind. That is how the person feels, the person's thoughts and emotions. So that's the first school that was set up, structuralism. And in most situations, we attribute structuralism to a retitioner and Wundt. So Wundt was the first person to, uh, to, to propagate structuralism. Then later on, Titchener what, further expanded on Wundt's idea. So it means all of them, they use what, an instrument known as introspection. That, that is looking what, within or inward. All right as I explained previously. So please, any question on structuralism? Hannah, your hand is up. Hannah, please go ahead. Hannah, please unmute your mic and watch and speak. And it seems you are far away from your um, device too. Wow. I could barely hear you, so let me move on. All 
All right. So the next thing is functionalism. That's another school. So with time, the functionalists who had, um, they to some extent criticize the structuralist argument about you looking, you just looking at the basic components of what of the mind. So the the functionalists believe that oh, you don't just look at the basic component of the mind, how the mind is composed of the feelings, um, the thoughts and everything. You are supposed to know how the mind in itself what function. So the um, argument is what is to know how people what adapt in their environment. So you are telling us, oh, how do you feel? You need to let us know how do they use those feelings to what to adapt in their environment? How do they use those thoughts to also adapt to their environment? So that is what the, that was what the functionalist was what was really propagating. So we normally say that the functionalist they were focusing on the function of the mind, how the mind operates. And they use an instrument or a method known as observation and what and experimentation. So you know, I said the structuralists use what introspection, that's their method. The functionalists use observation and experimentation in doing that. And the main proponent is William James. William James. All right. So please, any question when it comes to the functionalist argument? Okay. Priscilla. Priscilla, go ahead. Um, and sir, please, when you were in theory or something, you said under of structuralism. Mm -hmm. But on the slides, it says Edward rather called it structuralism or something. I don't know. I'm a bit confused. You said, would you repeat what you said? I'm saying that. Mm -hmm. When you were explaining, you said um, Wilhelm is the founder of structuralism. Yeah. But then on the slides, it says Edward. Edward um, called it structuralism. So I don't know. I'm confused here. Can you explain? Good. Okay. Can, some, can someone um, clarify this? Okay. Um, so can someone clarify okay. this? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, Bruce. please. Can I can I open? Yeah. Okay. Please, um, um, please uh, Mrs. Lady, uh, says said Ed Edward expanded it. Uh -huh. So let's say um, he was the second in command. Um, hope hope is clear. Good. Hello. So initially, yes. Hello. Um, okay, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yes, sir. Meaning Edward and uh, Tichner, they belong to the same school of thoughts. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Because mm. as I rightly said, I said when it comes to the schools, when you say schools of psychology, it means one school can have several what proponents of people. Because schools of psychology is about um, a group of people who share what similar idea. So if structuralism is a school, then it means that we could have several what people with similar ideas. So it means Edward um, Wilhelm Wundt was the first person to what to propagate structuralism. Then later on, Edward Tichner came in and also what? And also expanded, also uh, propagated wound ideas. That's basically what it implies. All right, so let me move on. With um, behaviorism. So when it comes to behaviorism, they were today criticized. Okay, I could see about two people there. J4C, your hand is up. Okay, Kwame, you can go ahead. I'm sorry. So, um, you actually mean that um, it was just um, 
where um, Edward Stichner that came to um, name it or came to give it a name, even same though where, um, Wilhelm was practicing or that's not, was practicing that's not the what, same thing or had the same. That's not what I'm implying. What I'm implying is that first, it, um, William Wundt was the one who what, who started the structuralism. When you say structuralism, it is not about the name or what's about. Basically, we are talking about their ideas, what, what they, they were trying to propagate. They were trying to say that the mind, we are supposed to know the elements, the basic elements within the mind. So we call it the structure. We are, we are trying to do, let us know the structure of the mind. Okay, so it, it means that a lot of people, Tichna and what, and um, Wundt, they believe that for us to understand the mind, we are supposed to know the basic elements. So we call it structuralism. All right, so let me move on. Behaviorism. So with behaviorism, they believe that most the first two, structuralism and um, and the functionalism, they don't really tell us how behavior is all about. Okay, they don't really tell us how we observe behavior and everything. They just tell us, oh how um, the mind function and how are the basic elements within the mind, but they lose focus in telling us how certain um, observable information influences our behavior. So the behaviorism, their emphasis was on what? On observation, how observable information could influence our behavior. So, for instance, they stated that all behavior is a response to specific stimulus. When you say stimulus, they are things within our environment. So, if those stimulus influences our, our environment, then it means that we are supposed to understand it better. And how do we understand? By observing those what information, those stimulus within our environment. So, that was their main information. And under Behaviorism, we have several what proponents. All these people are proponents. Let me underline them. So these are the proponents you are supposed to know. B.F. Skinner, J.B. Watson, Ivan Pavlov, and Co. All right, so Charity, your hand is up. Charity, please unmute yourself and speak. Okay. So, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, please can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. So please, uh, where can I get the slides to buy? Because I'm having what? a little challenge with my downloading on. The slide, if what I can slides? get the, the handout. The slides that I'm projecting? That's what yes, you need? Because, yeah. You don't have to buy. Pardon? Just, you don't have to buy. Go to Sakai. It has been uploaded. Go to Sakai Resources. It's there. All right. I'm having a problem downloading it. That's why. Then, Charity, there's nothing I can do. You see that you consult your other colleagues and discuss okay. this with them. All right. <laughs> So it means that the major instrument the behaviors they use is what? Is observation. So these are the things you are supposed to pay attention to. The major instrument or method they use is what? Is observation. Okay, Michael, your hand is up. Michael, listen to your far away from your machine. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. All right, good evening. Good uh, evening. Uh, please, to um, a humble appeal to um, students offering psychology, most most especially in categories of the group that has been dedicated. Um, some people were asking if, especially the group A and the other groups, that um, would there be any meeting for them? Because um, as of then, there has not been any uh, thing on Saturday projected on them. I, I totally get you. Right now, we have three tutors teaching this course, and you can you can check 
those who, who sign up, you can check your tutors and all that. So it means the tutors are the ones who are supposed to, who are supposed to meet them. In case they want to meet you, meet them, they will send them a message on the Sakai. So it means that as of now, each okay, student is supposed okay. to check their Sakai option. And I believe they will contact, they will contact you them in, in due time. All right. Oh, okay. Okay, because as of then they said they had there hadn't been any um, information on Sakai, and please, um, can we? My, please, my focus is on Group B, so please let me let me go ahead. Is it related to those who sound that have? Is it related to what we are doing, or is it a different thing altogether? Because I don't want us to lose lose focus. So if you know it is not related to what we are doing, please lower your hand. All right, Dennis. Okay. So Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, um, sir. Please have with the behaviorism. Okay. You said um things within the environment. Yeah. How such things have influenced um, human behavior. Please exactly. um does um the nature and the nature debates falls within Good. there or that's Good. yeah you are perfectly right especially the behaviors they believe in the nature aspect. You know, the nature is about this thing that, okay, our genetic component or biology what has an integral role to play. But okay. the behaviorists believe in what? In nature, how the environment plays an important role. Nature. Yeah. Yeah. So you can go through um, okay. All right. sense Th treatment. That, that's, that's the ethical nature. Okay. Okay. Treatment. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so let's go ahead. So Gestalt. Gestalt um, Psychology, that's also another school. They believe that um, whatever information that we are studying, we shouldn't um, study them in what? In piecemeal, in, se in separate. Like how the structuralists believe. You know, the structuralists, they believe that, oh, we are supposed to study the basic, basic components. That makes up what? The mind. But the behavior, the um, guest thought, they believe that we should study things in whole. We should study the entire mind in as one component. We shouldn't take it in separate. So, for instance, I think they have a symbol, a typical thing like this. When you see this, okay, if you could see that, um, what, what what does this come to mind when you see this object? What do you think? Is, is this object? I see a reflection of an individual. Good. So someone can say, well, I can see a reflection of what? Of two individuals. That, that means you are focusing I, on I, one. I can, hello. Yeah? Yeah, I can also see the female genitalia. Really? <laughs> Yes. Okay, to some extent, it's more or less like a vase. I, I know why you're saying it is a female. <laughs> yeah, it looks like vase. a womb, a uh, yes. female womb. womb. Yeah, it's not a, a womb, it's a vase. B A S E. When you, that, one, that, one, that means you are focusing on the white background. But when you focus on the, on the black background, then it means you are seeing what faces, two faces. Yeah. So, according to the guest hall, for instance, when I draw something like this, Oh, let me erase this. Uh huh. When I draw something, I think those who did geography would understand. Okay, it's more or less like you have two what, uh, two different paths. Okay. So it means you are taking the whole of this as what? As one component. The two lines as what? As separate, separate component. But some, someone can see it as what? As this, 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 and that. When you see it like this, it is quite disjointed. And you, you wouldn't be able to what, make meaning out of this, right? So that's why the guest are saying 
it means whatever information that we are what we are looking, we shouldn't look at it in what in in bit in separate or in piecemeal. We should look it out in what in holes. You are supposed to look out in holes. The moment you see it as a whole thing, then it means it, it gives you a clue that oh, this is what this is more or less like a line or what or a path. Then this one is also what another path. But the moment you see it as what as four different lines, you wouldn't be able to what, connect the dots and know what it is all about. So that's the guest all. They are saying whatever information that we what we do, we should see it in holes. So for instance, a typical example is, I think back in undergrad, there was this um, SRC president, okay? And he made a statement and the statement he made I think it was highly, I've forgotten the entire details of, of it, but he didn't end, okay? No, he, he even stated the entire thing, but some people took it out of, of the contest and what, and took out only some few portions that would, that would benefit them. Then they were circulating just to, just to disdain the SRC president. So it means if you don't see, if you don't get the whole details of what of that information, you might be in haste to conclude that, oh, this precedent is what is bad. So that's why we normally say that in life, you're supposed to know the whole details of what of any information before you can what you can make judgments or conclusions. That's a guess though. You're saying always get the full details, or the whole details, rather than getting the information in pieces and what and make conclusions. All right, so please, any question? And the major proponents are these people. These are the major proponents of Gestalt psychology. And these are the, the methods they use. So you should pay attention to them. All right, okay. Alasa, your hand is up. Alasa, please unmute your mic and speak. Alasa, please un unmute your mic and speak. Your hand is up. Hello, All right, sir. Okay. Uh, please, I want to uh, complain about our number in joining. Uh, I think we are more than 100, but when you want to join, they'll tell you that uh, we are 100 and you cannot join again unless someone falls us. C can we next time extend our number a bit? And there's nothing I can do about this because per Zoom, Zoom in most situations, the maximum is what? It's 100. Unless maybe we use the premium and the premium comes with charges. And as a tutor, I'm not, I'm not responsible for that. So per the instructions, I'm supposed to use Sakai and I decided to use Zoom so that at least you'll benefit. And those who can join, then it means that they should use the what? They should wait for the pre-recorded videos, then I'll circulate. And that is why we know for sure, we know about your number. That is why we've, what, we've divided you into what? Into, into three groups. So those who wouldn't be able to benefit, if you wait for the pre-recorded videos and it will be circulated, that's all I can do. All right. Okay, sir, thank you very okay. much. So the next one is psychoanalytic school, psychoanalytic school. So with the psychoanalytic, it was pro propounded by someone known as Sigmund Freud. This person, Sigmund Freud. He was the one who, uh, who propounded the psychoanalytic school. And when it comes to Freud, he believes that whatever information or whatever behavior or personality we put up, it is due to our unconscious mind, unconscious mind, this. It is due to our unconscious mind. And according to him, these um, unconscious minds start from childhood. So it means our childhood experiences shapes our personality or our behavior. That's what is what his theory or his school is all about. So according to him, 
the mind has three main parts the conscious mind the preconscious and the unconscious mind so these are the three main parts of the mind you can be asked or they taught you these things okay all right so this diagram they normally say that within the mind the unconscious mind for instance the unconscious takes a large portion of it the unconscious mind takes a large portion then the preconscious is around the side then this is the conscious mind so when you say the conscious mind conscious that's conscious they are the things we can easily bring into awareness so it means information that we can easily bring into our awareness, they are within our conscious mind because we are conscious of it. Then the preconscious mind, the, the information, um, we find it hard a bit to, uh, to bring it to our, into our awareness. But if we, if we make little effort, we can easily uh, bring it back to mind. Then with the unconscious mind, they are the information we can't bring into, into, into awareness according to Freud. So the only time we can bring unconscious mind into awareness is maybe when we are dreaming or through slip of tank because we are not aware. So it means, according to Freud, whatever information that you see during a slip of, maybe due to slip of tank, it means that that sort of information was within your unconscious mind. Then unconsciously, you brought it out. All right, so please, any question and uh, when it comes to what I've said so far? If we are... Sir, please, can you go over it again? So which one should I go over? Please, the various minds, the conscious, pre-conscious and unconscious. All right, so, so I'm saying that when it comes to the um, conscious mind, they are the things we can easily bring into awareness. So like, okay, when I ask you, what is psychology? If it is something that you've learned and you can easily what, bring it back to awareness, that's a typical, that, so that means that sort of information is within your conscious mind, the conscious. Then with the pre-conscious mind, sometimes you struggle to bring it back to awareness. So maybe you've learned information about what psychology is all about. You are struggling. But you can see that with time, when you gather your thought well, you can easily what, bring it back. That means the information at, at that moment, when I asked you, it wasn't within your conscious mind. But when you got, after you, you were able to gather your thought and everything, you were able to bring it back to consciousness. So it means at first, it was within the pre-conscious then with the unconscious mind it means the other information you find it very difficult there's no way you can bring it back to mind the only time you can bring it back to mind is during dreams and what and slip of tank and other sort of events especially someone who went through some traumatic events maybe the person was sexually abused or something it means that sometimes some of i have um this client that um, i'm treating she's going through a disorder known as post-traumatic stress disorder, which is a typical disorder as a result of sexual abuse. So at the moment, the person, some of information, she can't even remember some of the details of um, the sexual abuse that happened. So it means since she can't remember, those information has been moved to where? To the unconscious mind, preventing, it, preventing um, her from what? From remembering those events. All right, Ahasa, so your hand is up. Yes, sir. Please, sir. I want to find out among the unconscious, preconscious, and the conscious, which one takes the largest portion? Yes, sir. So, please, someone should should answer him. You, you can raise up your hand and, and I'll call you. Yeah, Patrick. Per, per the diagram is the unconscious piece. Exactly. Per the Hello. That is, yeah. is the unconscious that is the largest. Exactly. So for the diagram, we should even give you a clue. That means that you can see that the unconscious is taking a large portion of, of it. 